I love the name of this firecracker. I buried a hen. That spider jumped on my arm. I didn't even notice it because I can't feel that part of my forearm. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm going to take you through a practical example of how I plant out our chilies now that it's chili season here, or in some other places in the world, you call them hot peppers. But it's chili here in Australia, but it's not. It's really quite hot because we're in chili season. What do they call them chilies for? Anyway, let's get into it. So this is the raised garden bed that we're gonna plant all these chilies in. I'm gonna give you a rundown on all of them soon. But if you've been watching my channel, you would know that this garden bed here has given me hell over the last few years. It's one of those kit beds that you slide together, plastic posts. It has not worked the way it was supposed to. The plastic post bowed out, the bed ended up falling apart. And I tried various ways over the last few years to keep this stupid thing together. But alas, in the end, I just had to rebuild it and it's taken me ages. I did rebuild the other one, and I've got some capsicum, or you'd call them in some parts of the world, sweet peppers, growing in that now. And I'm meant to build this one directly after, but it's taken me several weeks to get around to it. But I've finally done it. I've simply got rid of those plastic posts and instead brought in these hardwood posts. And all I've done is used some roofing screws and screwed it on. I've already did a video on the other bed, so you can go back and have a look at that if you want to. But the reason why I got these posts or I left these posts so long is because the thick walled chilies and of course the sweet capsicums they are a major target for our Queensland fruit fly well I'm going to just put up a simple insect net over the top here and these four posts being a little higher are going to help create part of that framework I'm not going to do that today I'm going to plant these out first and I'll show you that down the track as far as refurbishing this bed goes once I did rebuild it all I've done is use some garden soil that I already had from some old raised garden beds that we had knocked down and refurbished I then added a little bit of commercial blood and bone and I also used a commercial what they call five in one fertilizer type compost and I added one bag of that to this bed. I'm not adverse to buying commercial products as long as they're made by good small businesses trying to do their best. Just like some of these plants here and of course the seeds I purchased or commercially as well because I think it's a good thing sometimes to help out local businesses. It's not all about being frugal gardening and the other thing is I decided that I wanted to plant a few seedlings out because we're already into the season and I wanted to catch up particularly for this garden bed here. And as usual, I topped this bed off with some sugarcane mulch because that will help suppress the weeds. It will preserve moisture. It'll keep the root balls nice and cool and it'll also stop evaporation so that you don't have to water as much during the hot periods. Oh, and I nearly forgot. I buried a hen. Yes, you got that right. A chicken right in the center of the bed here. Buried him down. Him buried her down. Unfortunately, I went down and visited the chickens this morning to let them out into the free ranging area and I found that she had literally dropped off the perch. Well, she dropped into a nesting box and that's where I found her. Probably nothing nefarious and to be honest, it's probably good that she went because for some reason the drake down there, our duck, kept thinking that she was a duck and he just relentlessly chased her around and tried to mount her all the time. If anything, that could have been the number one thing that finished her off in the end, sheer exhaustion. What we'll do now is I'll just go through the plants that we're going to put into the bed today and also what we're going to sow and how we're going to do it and why and all that type of poop. There's going to be a few like this cayenne here, it's a cayenne lilac that isn't going to necessarily need netting but it's going to come in here anyway because I just want to fill up this bed and get it pumping full of chilies. This is a five on the heat level. Yeah, cayennes aren't usually very hot. I mean, you can get hot cayennes, of course, but it's a lilac, so it goes from green, purple, and then red. So that could be quite pretty if it's growing well. The next one along is a chili Santa Fe Grande. This one here is more like a mini capsicum or sweet pepper. It is a mild chili, not very hot, and this would definitely get stung. Yeah, it's got a thick wall. Apparently tastes quite nice, I've never tried them. This one here is a firecracker, 
supposed to be quite hot. We don't mind hot chilies. I love a hot chili, so that's fine for me. And I haven't tried this one before either. It is more jalapeno type shape, but I think they're smaller. And this one is more like a jalapeno. It's called a chili Brazil, but to me, it looks almost exactly like a jalapeno. I don't know, you guys might know more about this particular chili, but I haven't tried it, so I'm gonna put that in. The next one along is a seed packet of jalapenos. I'm going to sow these in the middle here and I'll give you a demonstration of that and I'll be doing it it's very similar to the way I did the capsicums which is very much no fuss at all. And then we come to these habaneros. Now I've moved these two and overwintered them as I did this one here as well. They're just starting to develop their leaves now coming out of winter. I gave them a good prune. I pulled them out of the garden that we refurbished a few months ago through the winter time and I saved them. I potted them up and saved them so that I could replant them out again and they'll grow beautifully. They're already starting to fruit and it's a great example of overwintering chilies in a warmer climate or any climate really. So they were rooted into a garden bed. I dug them out carefully, kept some of the root ball and planted them into pots and so that I could plant them back out when the weather warms up. And this last one here, I have this down labeled as a anaheim. Anaheim? Anaheim? I think this is named after a city in California, an Anaheim. Uh, you guys let me know how do I say that, but I think it is. But I'm not sure if this is the right plant. I think I might have got done on the seeds. I brought this off eBay and it looks more like a bird's eye to me. I believe this Anaheim it should be a larger chili and not orange. Let's just plant them. I think I'll put these larger plants on this side here, simply because, though the reasoning behind it is because the sun sets through the west here and it's coming in and it's very hot as it sets. And this just might give a little bit of shade to the jalapenos that I'm gonna sow here, the small seedlings. And on this side, I think I'll put the cayenne there the Santa Fe Grande, the yellow thing here. I'll get three across, the firecracker here, and perhaps this one there. And then I can spread the jalapenos out in the middle because I want them to be the most. And there's nothing hard about the way I plant these fellas out. Just simply clear a bit of mulched area, whatever's necessary, dig down because it's fairly loose soil. I don't really even need my shovel or anything like that or my hand tools. Just dig down like that, squeeze out the pot and bury it. I'm, you could bury it a little up like a tomato, but I'm just gonna bury it at around the same level or similar and then just mulch it in around and that's all. I'll put the label nearby so I have an idea of what it is. Then just squeeze in the soil around it. That spider jumped on my arm. I couldn't even, didn't even notice it because I can't feel that part of my forearm. He's not dead, he's there. Gave me a bit of a fright, hopping around. Obviously, he's happy to have a new home. Now the firecracker. I love the name of this, firecracker. Reminds me of Firecracker Day in the Northern Territory where I grew up. The young fella, now it's all illegal of course. The real good old penny bangers and the ones that went really big and bang, they're gone. Something that you could blow a thumb off with. Unfortunately, kids won't uh, have that opportunity. Right, that's that one done. You can see how simple it is. Planting them about 30 centimetres apart. That's about right. They will grow into each other and bush out. Some will bush out larger than others. The soil is good to begin with. Probably still grow okay even if I didn't add anything to it because it's wonderful garden soil that we've just manufactured and, and kept alive for many years. Yep. All right, next we'll just keep going along. I'm going to sow these jalapenos in here in a, in a bunch, in an area. Just going to rough up the soil like this. 
and then we'll open it up. I'm going to throw the whole packet in. No use keeping any. And just sprinkle them around. Sprinkle the whole lot in there. Probably about 20 seeds. Make sure that they're all in there. Make sure there's none left. Because you don't want to, you never know, one of these seeds might be the ones that comes up for you. There you go, there's two left in there. Just spread them around like that. Just make sure they're spread out a little bit. Because at this time, it doesn't really matter. You just want them to germinate so that they can be pricked out and planted elsewhere in the bed to fill this bed up. And here I've just got some cheap potting mix. I'm just gonna throw that, just sprinkle it over a little bit just to cover those seeds. Maybe half a centimeter if that. We'll give them a water in in a second, pat them down, and that'll do for them. And like I said, once they come up, then we can start pricking them out and filling the gaps in the bed here. Sometimes chilies can be a little bit finicky. I've noticed this over the years, sowing them in bulk like that, at least you know you're gonna get a few that's gonna strike. Whereas if you just put two or three in, waiting for them for a week or two to come up and they don't, then that's a disappointment. And then you've got to start over again and you're starting to run out of time in the season. All right, now for these big fellas that are overwintered, I think we'll do the front one first. I might need my digging tool for this. get an idea of how much we need. Needs to go down a little bit more. Push him down. And then we'll throw that other soil back around the plant. Lovely. More mulch. Put that mulch back around it. And apart from a water in, that's that done. Beautiful. Very good soil, this stuff. Beautiful soil. And you can smell it too, it's lovely. Whack it straight in, it'll sort itself out. Throw the rest of that soil around. Mulch it. No fuss, no mucking around. Just throw it in there. It'll come good, it'll grow well. I'm not even gonna bother with any seaweed solution or anti-root shock stuff. Just gonna water these plants in once I'm done. That won't matter that the soil's a little bit high. It'll still grow well, mulch that in. And now we'll just give it a bit of a water in. Water in here, keep them moist, those seeds moist for several days while all the time really, until they start coming up and then make sure you don't leave them dry out. So that's what I'll be doing, coming out here every morning and afternoon and giving them a little bit of a sprinkle to make sure they don't dry out and get as many germinate as possible and then populate the rest of this garden bed. As these plants develop more, probably in the next month, I'll find it necessary to put a net over it. And I will bring you in and do another video showing that process and also why and also how I can then pollinate these plants without pollinators being able to get to them because it'll be insect netting that goes around it to prevent insects. But you also need to be able to pollinate those plants too. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big red hot thumbs up. Share the video around and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's uh, keep going and see if we can't maybe make two million. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Well, we got to one. That's pretty cool. 
hey, for a gardening channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.